Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, kings, queens, my knights and mages, how's everyone doing tonight? My name is Emmanuel Manier, Sunny Staples Loom, and I'm joined by none other than Prince of Nepal. And we are here bringing you the Prophecy Cup. We are bringing the Prophecy Cup League Nitrogen Conference in partnership with Everlife Gaming Network. Tonight we're bringing you matches with the life of Polio and Dolphin Slash to the best of three, season seven, week three. And we're about to get some hype in the legend starting. We have a lot we want to try and talk about while we're in Champions Legend before things get too fast for them. We've already got fresh at the first thing. And the thing I want to talk about is the fact that Match 9.3 has finally been great. And uh, first of all, we like, truly really to 9.3. Couple points to hit on. Bounties got changed, so now they are not as ridiculous as they used to be. Jungle XP got changed, so now junglers are kind of forced to clear out a couple cannons and gank, 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 and AD itemization. Thank you, Riot. Thank you, Jack. We died for our sins. Jack died to give us AD items back. <laughs> he gave us secret items back, and now AD carries are actually in a very good place. And one thing that we need to look out for, Lucian. Lucian right now is, I think it's probably the best city game. While people are still figuring out builds and stuff, Lucian still has his handy dandy Blade of the Lord King and he transition to Grim, which is incredibly strong, especially with the new PD item. Just looking through our bands, we see the Thresh, the Jin, and the Xin Zhao. Xin Zhao obviously an early game jungler. Thresh and Jin may be targeted bands. I know Jin has definitely come up with the itemization changes. Crit Jin with the new build, he will one do. Silas being banned out. He's the new champion. There is a couple of uh, flexes you can do. You can run him in the top, mid, or jungle. Uh, I can see in bot lane from Viper, the uh, AD carry for Griffin. He's running AD carry uh, uh, bot lane. He's the good one. He's good. Nunu definitely a target ban, not too high uh, level of a jungler, but with the new jungle XP changes, he definitely can spam game, which is what I think another jungler is now. I also want to bring up the point that because we support what's the reason a lot of people are just being so bad. Nunu, even though he doesn't have blood to live, he's not able to do it anymore. The fact that he feels like he's so boring in the jungle, he has more shields than he's ever been in the tree, so it's pretty good to have an AD game. Pick is gonna be you want an AD and you want to take a, a new jungle that takes advantage. Why not pick up King? Kindred is a great champion because she really abuses the new itemization changes. Obviously, she can still go her usual build. She goes warriors or the attack speed enchant into like tanky items, like more like lawn stuff. The new PD shield is pretty good for Kindred. She can transition to a crit character, especially with her increased range after 4 stacks for passive, she can do a lot of work. And one thing that we didn't see this patch, obviously we saw Aurelia get hit, we saw champions like Kali get hit, Aatrox get hit, my boy Urgot did not get hit, and he is king of the top lane at this point. I don't, so they were talking about this in our Reddit discussion, like, we're in a position right now where seven of the top top laners are all around. The only person really that can compete with him is Clay, and it's not even because of how good he is in top laners, it's because he can roam to mid lane and not be fighting. Just looking at picks overall, we see the Kindred, the Urgot, and the uh... Oriana is out of my portfolio and Don Dolphin slash. We see the Morgana and Lissandra. A lot of CC, a lot of single target lockdown and AoE overall. And you see the Jinx pick up. 80 items are back, boys. Lane Kingdom bot lane. Forgiven is coming back and so is 80 items. We are transitioning into a meta where I think hyper carries like Jinx, like Kogma, can scale up. But I still think that characters like the Lucian that we see from Dolphin slash. If he gets ahead, he can abuse that lane very hard, and it's hard by the office lane right now. I'm kind of interested in that too, like, Oriana, I get you want to secure yourself a safe game later, but I feel like Oriana's not too high on anybody's by these bullets. Now, Oriana's a lot of people have been in the S tier, low play so because everyone else is just playing the track, and Oriana is still Hey, 
I want to aggressive AD characters. The hair and he is the League of Raven plus the Braum support. That is definitely a bot lane that can kill. Ooh. And it looks like with the Karma pickup for the side of Dolphin Slash, they are putting their eggs in the James back. back game. Obviously, the Sondra can create space, Lee Sin can create space, and get some aggressive girly ganks off, but this game is about the Jinx. That is the character that we want to see, and that is the lane that we're probably going to end up focusing on in this game. Uh, just running through the team comps again, Life of Polio picking Urgot top lane, Kindred jungle, Oriana mid, with a Draven and Braum bot lane, and we see on Dolphin Slash we're going to see the Sondra top. They're still finalizing out the picks, but most likely it's going to be a Morgana support with Karma mid and the jungle we set with Jinx as the character. Yeah. <laughs> WTF okay. two Jinxes. Two but Jinxes is so crazy. That was probably I really like this, right? Like like you said, this is gonna pretty much put the main game on their AD carry, or whether he can you know get his to his late game tennis or not. And if they do, Mikey Tennis is going to carry it. Holy old dude. Holy, if Mikey Tennis is not his late game energy, they do not win. Like it's pretty, it's pretty one dimensional with team comp for them. They have maybe some potential until Asanda to try to carry the top lane, but I don't really see that happening because he's, that's just not the way she's going to build this team. This is not meant to be that way. Not in Karma, bring all the utility to the team to untouch the sitting in the game space for the game. Asanda is more than likely going to use it all the time himself. Somebody else will kill for the game. Other team, uh, Michael Polio is going to be initiated on the fight with Oriana with the Dawn with the Earth and 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 Again, obviously these lanes can win if there's outplay on the side of Dawn and Slash, but picking Lissandra and Earth and the Earth is going to The Karma into uh, Oriana, they're trying to still even. The eggs are in the Jinx back end. I do want to see what the itemization can do. Uh, we did do the math on 9.3, and I highly suggest anybody that wants to look at the old, like in depth how the items got to and how their gold efficiency came through. TLDR, IE is more gold efficient. All of the attack speed items are more gold efficient and more tied to their unique passives because all of them have the same amount of gold. The attack speed. Uh, is similar for rapid fire cannon and PD, while it's a little bit increased for static shiv and uh, for rune outs. But mainly, they're trying to focus on the unique passives. So, in terms of AD itemization changes, we're probably going to see the IE into a uh, either a rapid fire cannon or maybe the uh, rune ants hurricane for the jinx. But it is a rough game for Dolphin Slash to play. There is a lot of threats of Life of Polio that can take around. Early game, if this Draven gets fed, I don't see how this bot lane on the side of a uh, Dolphin Slash wins. That's a pretty big if, right? Like, yeah, that Draven has more damage than Jinx, but Draven doesn't really have a way to close the gap, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like the Jinx and Morgana should be able to stay safe enough on their own because finding a shield that, dra unless they misplay heavily, Draven, yeah, he can poke her down and he has the axes to scare her, but Jinx shouldn't actually be in any threat of actual death. But the, again, the problem with that is that Morgana, Black Shield is only on one character, and I trust the Braum enough to where he can either poke out the shield and try to burn it down, or just go. W in, go on one character, and then throw the ulti on the other one. It is going to be up to the Jinx and Morgana to try to play the lane as safe as possible and try to scale up, because that is the path to victory that they've chosen for this game. Just looking over everybody's runes and masteries, I don't see anything too outlandish. Hail of Blades, Draven, Phase. Oh my goodness, you can hover over them now. That's nice. Press the attack, Kindred. Phase Rush, Oriana, that's more... Makes more sense nowadays. The only thing that looks a little bit weird is obviously the Halo Blades Draven, but he is trying to play way a little bit more aggressively. Uh, we do see Dravens either go press the attack or conqueror, even if they if the enemy team especially has more tank characters. But on the side of Dolphin Slash, there's a, there's a lot of squishy members. Mm -hmm. Lissandra's probably the tankiest one with Aftershock. But besides that, if Draven gets ahead in this game, he's going to be three-hitting people. And with the new AD itemization changes, 
Draven's in a prime spot to carry this game for the side of uh Although I do feel having the Karma in the mid lane, she's going to have a lot more ability power in her kit, allows her to provide that artificial tankiness for the Lee Sin and the uh, and the Lissandra to be that sort of pseudo front line to at least, you know, buy, like I said, buy enough time for them to peel back and for Jinx to run through these fights. They don't need, they don't necessarily need somebody to be a behemoth like a Scion who, rest in peace, my undead hero, he'll come back eventually. But a lot, we've seen a lot of the tanks get nerfed, so this is kind of what teams are probably going to start moving towards. Loading screen, uh, finally making it through the game. Should have everyone loading onto their lovely summoner platforms. And this is going to be it right here. Everybody loading in, getting ready, run it down mid, and I'm excited. If you have uh, just joined us since Champ Select, my name is Prince of Nepal, and my fellow play-by-play -play caster, the wonderful Manny or Sunny, will be bringing you this game of uh, Dolphin Slash versus... I don't know why I'm blanking on the name. <laughs> the Life of Polio. Life of Polio, my bad. I, I kept thinking, I remembered Knight of Zed's name, and I, like stuck with me in my head. He used to be on, I think it was Polio Drifters was their Oh, own. that's what it was. Okay. You need to jump off a cliff, by the way, for stealing my bit. Uh, this team looks like they want to jump into a fight. Polio, five-man stack in this bush, really just in a defensive setup. It's, I've seen a lot of... Uh, don't, dang, now I forgot their name. Dolphin Shark? Dolphin Slash. Dolphin Slash. I've seen them a lot come like to go for these early invades. So just set up just in case, look for any shenanigans. Or not even just that. The fact that they have a Morgana. Teams kind of like to invade with that because level one binding, LOL. But the blue side also has a pretty good level one with the Braum. So I guess they were just like, you know what, line of scrimmage and going to have a pretty neutral early game. One thing I do want to say is that Geradius did take cleanse in this matchup against the uh, Karma while Karma opted for the teleport. You can definitely see, if bot lane fights ever goes a little bit in favor of uh, the life of polio, we're going to be end up seeing the double TP come in really quick. And double TP still, even though they nerfed TP, I've started, people are still liking double TP solely for that surprise factor it brings. Because one person comes, it's like Team Rocket, prepare for trouble and make it double. And you, this is not the four man squad you want coming down to clap you that can run super fast hold you CC'd under your tower, bind you, and they have a spell immune AD carry. Lane of phase. I love looking at a uh, pool party Draven. Like, I just like that he has balloons that squeak for his axes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rough right there. Missing both the axes on the pickup. <laughs> Burning through that mana. Sometimes it just be like that. Junglers both started... Uh, looks like they're going to do some of the... Are they both going for Scudder or are they trying to vertical jungle this game? I think there might definitely be some vertical jungling here. The wards definitely did spot both the Lee and it should have spotted the... Uh, I don't think it spotted the Kinder, but it definitely spotted the Lee. He's going to actually be behind on this play. He's going to... He most likely will get a 3 buff in this game. Good play by Knight of the Zed to uh, have forward wards to see the Lee going for the top side scuttle. Yeah, interesting that Lee, he went to go ward Knight of the Zeds, but didn't... Take it. Like I feel like once you drop that ward and see she's not oh, there, you just start creating. taking her instead of going for this cutoff and try to fight her in the river. She has double buff. She's gonna put some oh. damage down. Jump again. Get a reset. Forces flash out. Rom comes over to help, but one last auto attack is gonna do it for the Knight of the Zed. You're gonna get a pretty easy first blood on the Mr. Ticker right there, and this is gonna almost definitely secure a three buff for him. And that was just unfortunate. Mr. Ticker went for the Double slip, just a little bit too greedy. With his lanes getting shoved in, Braum was able to rotate first, and Knight of Zed picks up the first blood, picks up the stack as well, and now he's looking like in a great place to get this early game rolling for the side of uh, the life of Polio here. No, but yeah, that's gonna put him at about 1200 gold. He's gonna go back. He's gonna, uh, he has wards too, so even Seasley sitting coming back in his jungle. That's gonna set his. That's going to set Urga up to play much more aggressive if he wants to. He's going to have to take his nice time clearing out the rest of this jungle. And he's going to be going back with about 1,500 gold compared to Lee Sin, who was only able to go back and buy boots. And this is one of the big things that did get changed by this patch with the jungle like speed changes. At this point, Lee Sin's going to have to make a gank work. Or he's going to fall ridiculously far behind on this Kindred in terms of levels and gold. So oh, yeah, the this really puts the clock on top on Mr. Tico because if he doesn't make a play work, if he doesn't make a gank work, 
he's just gonna become useless for this game. And he's just gonna become a body that... Just a tank that uh, Mikey's gonna have to uh, utilize as this game goes later and later. While not at Zed, as we can already see, he's sitting on... Oh, Jesus, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, gonna, need him, gonna need the least sin to go tickle mode this game if this team wants to take over. Stop. <laughs> One thing though, another thing we're not we haven't mentioned yet that Knight of the Zed getting ahead does by him being so far ahead, this pretty much solidifies that Drape, APO, Mango, and Tupapi aren't gonna have to worry about him coming down to the lane, and they can just play that much more aggressive onto this Jinx and uh, Morgana. And we're already starting to see it. Jaden's taking about a wave lead and it's just gonna build a little bit and a little bit more. He's already burned through Jinx's potion while he still has his ready whenever he needs it. And they can seriously put pressure on this lane and maybe force out a bat, get some uh, turret plating damage and just make turn the heat up all that more on Mr. Tico because it may not see, it's probably just on, in all actuality, this shouldn't really mean too much. Jinx is generally somebody who falls behind early anyway, late game scaling carry, but to a jungler, depending on the mentality he has, being like, holy cannoli, my AD's falling behind because I mean, I need to make this play work. This can result in you being a little more, you know, palm sweaty, knees weak, arms heavy when you go for these plays, you might, you know, drop the ball and fault like we mentioned, fall further behind. Two levels is already the difference. And if you see this gold lead that's uh, in the game right now, sitting at around 1.3k, that's all the difference between Knight of Zed and Mr. Tico. And Mr. Tico actually doesn't have any camps to do. He's <laughs> level 3 and he has to make a gank work. And if they don't give it to him on the side of, on the side of life of polio, Mr. Tico is just doing nothing. He's going to be able to get this gromp here, but you can just see Knight of Zed's able to take topside scuttle. He gets the second stack of his mark, and he's going to invade on this red buff as well. He's gonna go take his red before it comes back. This is starting to look a little nasty right here. He's gonna need to, like you said, he has to make a gank work, but with the warding set up by Tupapi, there's pretty much no way he can get through the bottom lane. Or uh, he can maybe look for Oriana, but Karma's pushing. She's actually so far pushed, she's gonna have to get run down to the bottom side of the river by her opposing, uh, by the opposing jungler. Make a little wrap around and be fine. But the mid lane's pushed where she can't do anything. Tupapi could maybe, or it's not uh, Tupapi, Mr. Tickle could maybe look top, but Urgot's got himself warded all the way up the river too. This is excellent early gameplay from the side of the life of Polio. Ooh, Urgot's getting very close to being in kill range of uh, the Lestander. He needs to be a little bit careful. And this is something that we learned back in Season 3, Season 4. If you pick three losing lanes, or three lanes that have no priority in the early game, and then your jungler falls behind, you are in for a rough, rough rough time. Tupapi gets uh -oh. caught out here a little bit, but he should be fine and Lane's just gonna head back to being even. But just look at the difference between Mr. Tico and Night of the Zed here. Oh my god. Wait, he did he just get hit by the binding right there. Face tanks and, and he Mr. behind Tico. enemy lines out right <laughs> of the bed. Gets the kill. Might die to filet mignon, but should be fine. And that right there. So APO Mango, that should I feel like that's kind of a telegraph play right there. You he gets he sets up that kill for a Knight of the Zed to come from behind, oh but you should God. realize oh, about four man squad. We're gonna see if Tico mode or Mr. Tico can get the play he needs. Gonna have the ulti getting dropped right here by Kinder. This gonna is put her mark so down. Oriana ulti he pulls in. Double kill for that mid laner to radius. And now on the top side, Morgana's gonna drop the ulti. Urgot still has that fear beyond death. He's gonna bring her in. Re hurt a bit. Macho eight oh four gets the kill and that's a this 4 for 0 across the map. 3.2k gold lead at 8 minutes into the game. This game has been blown out. Oh, let's see. Oof, indeed. Karma gonna look for something. Speed up. She doesn't have any mana left to get through bounty now. So. Oh my god. He's Let's going go. for it. This Kid is... going for it, man mode. Is... Gets the kill. Now neither Zed's gonna go with the auto attacks. Pew Pew might be able to get it. She needs fish bones. One more auto flashes. Gets the last thing in the shutdown. It's gonna give her some much needed gold, but uh, that just takes it from 3.4 to 3.3k. And that play may have looked a little bit troll, and I kind of agree with that play being a little bit troll, but in the state of the game, how it is, Geradius having mid lane pressure, getting tower plating, and uh, Knight of Zed actually picking up now his third uh, stack of his passive, almost getting to that crucial fourth where he gets the range upgrade. That play was very important. Oh, we're gonna see a play happen on Geradius here. 
They're gonna try and make it work on his radius. Oh, yeah. It's hit from behind. Beautiful binding. The clan tries to go, but the SMD rocket from Jinx ends up securing the kill anyway. Really nice uh, roam attempt right there. And I guess good play for Mr. Tico, right? Trying to make something work. Like you said, find a gank, make it work, try and get this popping. But now the madman, him and his team, they're gonna start this up. Teleport. They have the mid line priority. They have the teleport coming in from Urgot. We might see a little four for zero starting up down here. And the question is, do you feel the red side actually has enough power to fight this? Um, It's gonna be close, but I don't think that, I don't think Urgot needed to teleport in this quick, this early. I think he could have uh, tried to wait a little bit, but I can understand why the play did happen. Geratus had just died in the mid lane, so there wasn't... At that point, it was going to be a 4v3 uh, situation. And uh, Life of Poli probably didn't feel too comfortable going for it. But honestly, even though we were talking about how this... I was personally thinking this game might have been doomed just from the start there. Uh, really got on Mr. Tico to make that play mid lane work, and... The kill distribution, even though it's 6-2, to two, the two kills are on the Jinx. Mm -hmm. So the gold is allocated on Dolphin Slash where it should be. It's just whether this early game lead that Night of the Zed has built and the bot lane of Mango and Poppy, uh, whether that can carry through or whether uh, Mikey can bring it back up here. Mikey... Is Mikey can do it, he just needs time. He's ahead of a big about 500 gold. Might be able to find a little bit oh. more in this fight. Draven flashing in, getting himself all the glory he needs. That was a humongous axe right there. Now under the tower, can he at least find the kill? He's gonna trade one for one. The biggest thing is that the shutdown does a shutdown doesn't go over. So trade with the jungler. Two for one in the bottom lane. But the big thing is that Draven got to cash in a lot of gold and he went from being 400 behind to 400 ahead right there. He's also going to be pick up, picking up pretty much all of the tower plating here. All of those plates have gone down to Mango and Poppy. And that is a lot of gold to be giving Draven early in the game. He should have, most likely have IE here. Sitting on 2k gold, probably picks up IE and Boots. Most likely goes Berserkers. And this is getting rough, because Night of Zed actually hit his key uh, fourth mark in that fight. He's now sitting at four marks with the extra range. He's going, looks like he's probably going to go PD or Runans here. And that lead that he built up just from the first blood is transitioning pretty well into this game. Oh, shoot, yeah, he did just hit his four. So he's going to, what is it? It's a seven, it's a 50, 75. I can't remember what it is, the range increase. I think it's a 75 or 125. Those two numbers stick out to me. But I'm, it's one of those two numbers. But it's still, it's, it's a legitimate large ink it's enough that it feels meaningful yes here on the top side lasandra trying to you know be something for a team to rely on but she's down almost 20 cs ergot's got the kill lead just an absolute bully up in the top lane mr Tico trying to come down going to the food poppy lands the kick gets with the e jinx drops the chompers but not enough to really do too much besides just you know flex their guns and show that they're still here and kicking but for how much longer until the doctor basically and again, you see, Mr. Tico has no jungle camps up. Not as that at this point is doing Rift Herald, and he's actually going to take, take the red buff of Mr. Tico too, or he's going to go for the top lane gank. And he just seems to be one step ahead of the Lee Sin in this game. Lissandra trying to recall. They're going to come in right here, jump out. Kindred, they're going to definitely trade tank this. TP from Karma is going to come in way too late. Can't she might just die. Anymore. She might go for oh. the Zed. Those out the queue, they're both inside the mark right here. She's gonna She's wait for it to go down. Die. Gonna get flipped over, thrown back, flipping it and reversed it. She goes down to Macho 804. Oh no, Mr. Mr. Tico. Mr. Tico, no! You might be able to get this kill. Gets one. Oh! Can't get the second one. Here comes Oriana flashing over the wall. Gets the kill with the command attack. And in terms of this game going from bad, it just went to sicko mode, as some might say. Wow. This game is getting rougher and rougher as we progress. The plays that are trying to be made, oh my god. Night of the Zed, excuse me, I was drinking some water, has the Ignite on top of him, is gonna live, and Morgana is just gonna have to walk away. They're gonna get more armor plating and take down this top lane turret with the minions. And this is gonna be two early towers with pretty much all the armor plating knocked off of them. So that's a lot more bonus gold. While the side of <clears throat> Dolphin Slash 
just kind of continues to lose out on some of this double play. Jinx is going to get set up right here. They laid the lure, pulled her in. APO Mango cashing in even more gold. Now sitting at 2 0 2 with a 600 gold value on his head. And in terms of plating, one big thing that uh, we obviously see reflected on the goal with the around 7.5k gold lead that uh, the life of polio is rocking. 11 turret plates were taken by the life of polio. Guess how many were taken by Dolphin Slash? Can I take a guess? Yes, take the guess. I'm gonna go with Donut. I'm going with a big fat zero too. <laughs> Obviously, we're in more of a faster meta than we've ever been in in League. Mm -hmm. Plating needs a lot. It's a lot of gold, but oh. Uh oh, Lee Sin coming in trying to make some work for his jungler right here. This might just draw on a double kill, I'll be honest. He's gunning down as quick as he can. Oh my god. He's gonna land the fear beyond death, and the madman keeps the chase. <gasps> Doesn't want to go all the way for it. He lands the Q. He gets the speed up. He has the minions on him. Bot Infernal got taken on the bottom side. Morgan. Lissandra's gonna go for the chase. He's sitting inside the bush. It's such a close fight up top. Neither of them wants to fully commit to it just quite yet, so it looks like we're gonna back off. Oh and my! And the last Q. Macho 804 is absolutely macho man here in the top lane. And that is what happens when you have a fully completed item on uh, Urgot, the premier top laner against Lissandra rocking the solid Lost Chapter and Leeson sitting on just Warrior Enchant. This game is getting blown out with a 10k gold lead for the life of Polio. And again, three losing lanes. At least three lanes that just didn't have priority. Karma never. Karma doesn't win the match against Ori. The bot Warrior lane of. really win against anyone to be fair. Yeah. She's kind of picked her because she doesn't lose either. But Oriana's the exact same doesn't really lose type champion. And the top lane. Urgot is the best top laner in the game at this point. Like right now, with all of the nerfs that have gone out, he is the premier top laner. And Lissandra is pretty much picked to negate the champion, but negating doesn't mean you actually win. And in the world of turret plating, where 160 gold goes over every time you break a plate, 11 plates went down. And the strategy of put all the eggs in the jinx basket really falls apart when Mr. Tico got first blooded around three to three minutes of the game. And they just never looked back at this point. Whew. He's gonna get pulled in by that command shockwave, but it's really just a warning shot, and he can afford to throw that out so leisurely when his team's up almost 12,000 gold. I have a question. Yes. Remember when Urgot first got reworked, around the same time Yorick did, when Urgot first got reworked, we kept seeing Orgot versus Yorick top lane like over and over, and, Urg and Yorick got beat into the ground with his own shovel. Whatever, what happened to Urgot? Like, why is this guy still coming back to terrorize the top lane? I thought he's he got nerfed too. Just a character that's he's tank. He's very, very tanky. His ultimate is almost always useful in the game. The fact that it's just an execute, like it's a percentage health execute, so you can. Oh my god. Uh oh, Draven flashing forward. Might look for the solo kill. Gonna throw out the sand aside, and uh, yeah, gonna pick up that kill right there with this. Blaze of death. Please. And any Blaze AD death. carrier main knows that we've all we've all been Mikey and we've all been Mango. <laughs> <And> the, <laughs> as as Mikey, as an AD main, I feel for Mikey. Here we go, Lissandra gonna try and make her way out. Kendra oh, running man. her down like an absolute dog. And we Take see that, that range out. coming into play. Rapid fire cannon plus four stacks on her passive. She just outranges. Oh. Oh, Oriana might be able to get some, uh, kick killed right there, but Mr. Tico is not able to find it. Now the absolute runaway right here, knock up onto the Morgana. She's going to drop the ulti, not going to do too much to keep her alive. Knight of the Zed with a double kill. And this lead just continues to grow and grow. We're at almost 14,000 gold. Going to have the sixth tower going down here pre-20 minutes. And they're just looking absolutely bleak. Karma back here trying to dirty farm the minions at this point. Try and make all the difference she can, but... We need an almost a miracle at this point. This is that 99.9% .9 chance we saw in the Patriots Falcon Super Bowl. Except there is no Tom Brady to turn this around. Whew. Good damage being put up, but she's about to die to four people. No. One Draven's just gonna stand back. Draven's gonna stand aside, not the ability to just let these people throw their bodies. Karma's gonna go down. Zed's gonna say, I'll take the kill this time. And he's dominating this game. He's at 
Prince Nepal mentioned how they tuned down gold bounties. He's back at the cap. Right that quick. We got a lot of max uh, max salary cap players on the side of uh, <laughs> Life of Foliar here. I like the basketball reference in uh, hey. Trade Deadline. We got max salary cap players. We got 007 Poppy down there. And <laughs> obviously, this game is just rough. Wait, did you say Poppy? Yes, Pop Poppy. Oh, yeah, Poppy, yeah, 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 the, uh, yeah, Poppy, our father. This game is rough. It's a game where the early game jungler ended up getting first blooded. It's a triple infernal game, and almost sure that the life of Polly will be securing that third infernal dragon, getting them that mm. massive 24% AD increase on uh, characters like uh, Draven and uh, Kindred, who I've heard can utilize AD very well. Uh, I may. Yeah. Hmm. Oriana's let's... gonna hit 300 before 20 minutes because he's at 284 right now. So that's, you know, fun interactive League of Legends. It's gonna. Yeah. But we've talked about how the life of Polio is ahead. Let's think about how we can get Dolphin Slash to come back into this game. Big room from the life of Polio disconnects, and Jinx can free farm for 30 more minutes. No. I... There is a. Somewhat of a way that this can come out. One thing that we don't see on the side of uh, the uh, the life of Polly, which I think is correct, obviously, is QSS. No, no players on the side of life is that have QSS. And we have all always seen Lissandra locking down the carry, and that character almost instant die. If Lissandra can lock down somebody that's not Urgot, because Urgot will one v five here. This is kind of rough. So Urgot gonna be the sacrificial lamb while the rest of his team goes for Baron. Ooh. He shouldn't be able to kill anybody right here. They executed this pretty well for the shutdown, but now they're gonna see blue team has slain Baron Nash and Kiyoshi will violently make that sacrifice for the team. He makes the sacrifice, but I don't think he actually needed to. He should have just... They had pretty good warding in the, uh, the side of Dolphin Slice's uh, red side jungle, so I don't think he needed to play that far up. Obviously, it's not going to be too big of a deal because they are 15k gold ahead, but those are the plays that you need to make when you're this far behind to come back in the games. You can't just sit there and just lie down and die. You have to make plays where you do a gang up on the member that's splitting the side lane. You waste your cooldowns because you have to make plays like that. Come back. League is not a game where you just give up and die. If you're, especially when you're this far behind, you don't really have a choice. You can't be like, I'm going to save it for this, I'm going to save it for this. Because that saving mentality, that sunken cost mindset is what got you to this 15k gold deficit. And just... Oh my god. Sorry, I had a point to make and I just saw the damage that were... Oh. Rom is chunking. Oriana with the command attack. Just telling this Morgana, get back. You do not know me or my team like that. Urgot gonna speed up the phase rush. Run her down under this tower. Flip her back. She's a pancake, ladies and gentlemen. Geradius takes that kill with ease. And now they push on with the tank, the Sentinel Urgot. Oh my charge. god. Knight of the Zed going on to Fountain Darn near at this point. Keeping them boxed in, telling the dogs, get in their cage. Here we go. Double kill. This is going to be the last fight for their lives. They're going to party like it's 1999. Triple kill. The quadra kill might get picked up unless Lissandra gets this. Flashes away, but Draven gets all the gold and glory. And with that A strike there, 23 minutes. They should be able to push this in, close this out fairly easily. 24 to 7 is going to be your final kill score as the bottom next turret falls. We're going to see the top next at turret fall. The Baron buff. Orion is just going to make sure none of the dogs try to leave. And that's going to pretty much solidify this game right here. 23, unless they continue to not end. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. 23 and a half minutes is what we're going to call this game. 50 to 33 point K is our final goal. Uh, score 10 to nothing in towers. Triple infernals. In 11 triple tower infernals. platings being taken. And Strong we just Polio, see though. a smashing from the life of Polio on Dolphin Slash. Mm -hmm. Things that we can look at for next game. I I think the strategy is fine, but you need, need to have, that have... You can't have three losing lanes, or you can't have three lanes that just go even you have to have some sort of po like strong point on the map where you can play through and to me it just felt like 
after Mr. Tico died, Nidivs that took over this game. And they were making dives on that bot lane, and they shut that jinx. They shut that basket down real quick. They put a hole in that basket, and all of the eggs fell through. I'm just looking at the stat right click just because I want to pop peaks my mind. I was first thing I always look at is vision score, which in a game like this, it doesn't matter how many more wards more got a place, her team was still getting clapped. But I do want to speak on the good vision that enabled them to keep making some of the aggressive plays in the early game. 34 vision score from the kid did with a very close behind 35 vision score from her comrade. Braum plays 20 wards in a 23 and a half minute game. Five control wards were bought by him. That is somebody who knows how to light up the night. Must be sponsored by Scatters. The the code that you gave me says an, is invalid. It's probably because all ten of them are filling up the spots and they're okay. They forget we have they have casters and don't move to spectate. <laughs> okay. Do I have any of them added? Two pop. Welcome to the world, no heroes and villains. Welcome to Legends never die when the world is coming.
Welcome back, guys. It's us again here with the Proxy Cup League Nitrogen Conference. My name is Emmanuel Manny, your son, Staples Loom. I'm joining another by, by none other than Redacted Prince Nepal Redacted. How's it going, my brother? From well, let me not do that because it's not the first time. We're just coming back from game two where the life of polio put on a, a clapping on the Dolphin Slash. I don't want to sound like rude or BM, but it was a very quickly handled game. Knight of the Zed carried through the jungle, enabled the rest of his team through superior jungling, uh, jungle routing and vision towards team just made it to where there was pretty much no chance for Dolphin Slash to get in. But that game happened. We had a nice little mental reset, hopefully for Dolphin Slash. It, coming into game two, they need to make some changes 100%. And they make the change. Instant Raven Ban coming out. <laughs> I think that's smart. Again, if you want to run a strategy where you want to go for a late game scale and carry like Jinx or Kogma or one of the new crit AD carries that's enabled by the 9.3 changes, Draven, you don't want him in that late. Lucian, probably don't want him either. So I can see Dolphin Slash going for maybe another Lucian ban here too. Uh, but they do have to ban that out in the first round or pick it for themselves because I Definitely will see, I can definitely see Mango playing just another Lucian game and trying to do the same thing he did, bully out bot lane, get four, four or five plates, break tower around 11, 12 minutes, and hard carry through there. Life of Polio throwing out the Jin ban. Again, he's very strong with the new item changes and probably also a targeted ban. As we move through the champ select, Xerath being banned out by Dolphin Slash, Life of Polio throwing out another respect ban. On the Thresh. Hopefully, we see more changes from Dolphin Slash. I want them to play more aggressive, not even aggressive. Champions that have more priority in lane. Something that actually wins lane. So it allows the jungler of Dolphin Slash, Mr. Tico, to actually make plays. Mm -hmm. Because we're in a world where you have to, junglers have to gank way more than they used to. Or got being picked up by Dolphin Slash. Good. Premier top laner, as we said before. And, and they get the only response that is feasible to Urgot in Kled. Life of Polio, they like to make it hard. They're like, you want to pick the Premier top laner? We got the counters. <laughs> so I do like this. I like that they didn't like panic or like overreact and ban away the Kindred because the Kindred, while she was strong last game, wasn't necessarily what the problem was. It was like we mentioned, they just got so far ahead and had bad lanes. So they're, wait, <laughs> hello? Are they going to say anything oh. you like to do better? I think so. Oh, no, they're going to pick the Cassiopeia, it looks like, because... Uh... Was banned out in this first game, but again, is a very strong mid laner. I do want to see how Mr. Tico does pilot the Kindred. Like you were stating, I don't think... I think Knight of the Zed played Kindred very well. But I think it, more, it was more that the player played very well than the champion there. I think if he was playing a Graves, maybe he was playing something, uh, maybe like an Olaf and Jarvan, I think he would have had the same type of effectiveness. But obviously, getting Kindred ahead, giving her the first blood, giving the mark, giving her three buffs, really expedited how well she scaled into that game. And by 15 minutes, she was pretty much a monster. She actually ended that game with 10 stacks on her passive. 10 marks, sorry. Oriana going to be picked up by Life of Polio, and we see Dolphin Slash throw out the respect, bam, to the Braun, saying, you cannot pick the same bot lane. Give me something else. Mm -hmm. I want to see what Life of Polio does give them. Uh, just from the best. way they looked in the first game, I would assume another aggressive, uh, aggressive oriented bot lane, but we could see the change up here, too. Jinx being banned out by Dolphin Slash. We'll have to see. The Bali meta is still shaking out uh, at the moment, and we don't know what the premier pick for Bali is, which I actually find very exciting because uh, mid lane always has it, top lane always has it, and bot lane for the past cup, couple years, we've been just sticking with Kaisa. Lucian is not banned. Lucian is they not banned. Down the alarms. One of these teams should take Lucian if they're not. They're uh, making interesting decisions. Lucian is a pick that I feel like should have, uh, should be seen. Uh, but they're going to pick up the Ezreal Jenna, so Safe kind lane. of very safe. 
it, very it, safe. It does have more priority than the Jinx Morgana. Kind of. It it scales a little bit weaker, but it does have a little bit more agency in the early game because Ezreal can pretty much skate through any lane, but we do see the Yasuo pick up for Mango. They're busting it out, boys. They so. are busting it out. This is a game, boys. Yasuo so. in the bot lane. So just real quick, for those who haven't ever got to see it too much, I feel like everyone's played against like one or two in like duos and normals, but essentially the way the whole Yasuo bot lane strategy works is Alistar's a headbutt in his kit in one of his basic abilities that knocks people up. It pairs very well with Yasuo's ultimate and his ability, his lack of crowd control. So that pairings really just kind of works on being hyper aggressive and taking the, the fact that they have superior damage in CC over the Ezreal Jinx. But like we mentioned, Ezreal Jinx is really, really, really 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 safe so they hopefully shouldn't have to worry about this until maybe something at level six one thing i do want to state though is that with the crit item changes it's actually already been stated by uh, riot blastoise he posted on twitter uh they are going to be hot fixing yasuo because they do feel that he's way stronger with the old crit items coming back which i agree with because now pd which was his premier item also gives him a shield so he gets hundred percent. He gets around hundred percent crit chance with IE, uh, PD. Also gets around uh, when he gets both of those items around a four hundred health shield, which scales up to six hundred health. Yasuo is not doing too bad with the crit item changes. So I do think that it that is a premier pick for bot lane and mid, obviously. And we're gonna have to see how Mango plays it through. In terms of the rest of the matchups, obviously we talked about it. Urgot versus Kled. Or got the premier top laner, but Kled is one of his most known counter picks and can do very well in Zoom, negating that true damage percent health ulti that we have. Uh, Kindred into Nunu. We did see Knight of the Zed's Nunu being banned out in the first game, a respect ban, uh, maybe a ban because the champion's rising up in the meta at the moment. I do want to see how he does it because Knight of the Zed last time played a scaling champion and was able to beat Mr. Tico. Now, Knight of Zed's playing more of an earlier, more of a supportive type champ. Can he take over the game like we saw in the first game? In terms of the mid lane, Geradius still rocking the Orianna. And we're going to have x actually on his Cassio, which was banned out in the first game, and see how that matchup rolls through. I want to take note of the fact that Orianna is not going for the cleanse, as we've seen some people do when they go, which I find weird, right? She took cleanse into the matchup versus Karma, but now she's not taking it versus the Orianna, instead going for the Flash Ghost. Personally, I don't think cleanse is too important uh, in this matchup, because obviously it's good against the Cassio, and if... I don't want to say it to be like rude or anything, but Geradius... Maybe Drace just didn't feel like he needs to respect it because in this gank, in the 2v2 in the mid lane, it's Nunu, Orianna versus Castillo Kindred. There's a lot of damage that comes from the Kindred Castillo, but the only hard CC is the Castillo ulti, which if you have a working mouse with high enough DPI, you can pretty much just turn around or be able to dodge it. It's going to be more on X Pride to actually outplay Geradius than, to, uh, than for Geradius just to get randomly hit by it. So I don't ex. I don't think it's uh, incorrect of him to take, not take cleanse this game. Oh, no, I think it makes sense. Dress. I just find it odd that last game he took it as karma or against a karma in his lane. Maybe he was taking because he respected the Lissandra from a different lane that much. That's, that's what I also thought. I thought maybe he, th he maybe thought that the Lissandra could have ran mid. And in that situation, you definitely do need the, the uh, cleanse that matchup because Lissandra, Lee Sin, you're going to be taking three elves that game. The Lissandra, the Lee Sin, and the death that you're about to have without the cleanse. As we get into game, nothing too weird with the keystones. Uh, Aftershock on Nunu. I have seen Predator. I'm pretty sure everyone's seen the, uh, the famous run it down bot lane Predator Nunu's. Conqueror on the Yasuo. Pretty standard oh, keystone. Nunu and Willump nowadays, bud. Hey, we don't, we don't acknowledge monsters around here. <laughs> Monsters can be made to fear. Come on. Rengar? It is Rengar. Look at that. 
Look at that. It only took you seven years of playing this game. Before I played the and League of Legends. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. Apex Legends, though. Oh, I have not. I've heard that is a popping game. Yeah, I do not. Yesterday had like, I think they had like eight million their first day because everyone was like, "Holy cannoli! This is, is everything it, I like from all the fun? other battle royales." It's very fun. I I play about two three games before we started casting today. Big things I notice real quick, just my even though there's League of Legends, I'm not sponsored by Riot, so I can say what I want. Um, it's a battle royale. Teams are you have it's all squads. Squads are three. There's built-in voice comms that don't sound awful like in Fortnite. Um, some things I like, it kind of forces you to play as a team, just that's how the game is built. Like the dropping system, one person considered the jump master and they control when all of you jump out. You can break off on your own if you want to, but otherwise they're going to control where you go for like 90% of the chance. Um, and just, it just feels more team injured. I know you don't like building because you're bad at it, <laughs> but so you don't have to worry about building it's kind of like blackout and the fact that it's just shooting guns picking up crates but then it also runs nice and it has like classes you have classes that each have like slightly different things like healers dps's but not really healers and dps's it's, it's weird to explain i say give it a try uh shout out to this janna for having victorious janna the season two golden above skin means uh means really been playing this game a long time it's still not lcs garbage <laughs> hey, come on. Not everyone can be LCS. We gotta go through the college uh, collegiate league. Then we go amateur. Then we go challenger. And then we get drafted into the LCS. Dude, I'm ready for like 15 years from now, 20 years from now, my son to be going to like a college. Like, I want to know who's gonna be like he's the going Duke. To the... <laughs> he's going to the Legends. combine. He's getting recruited. <laughs> He's like, illegal. <laughs> he's like, a Zion Staples Bloom really looking good out there. Probably gonna be first round pick for CLG. I can see like the reaction things, like they're just sitting in front of computers doing, uh, what is it, like MS tests to see how quickly they can the reaction time, <laughs> seeing how good they can do like freaking combos for the, like the basic combos like flash cast ulti or freaking like flash monsoon if they're support main things like that. You have like Faker playing Type Racer, and if you beat Faker <laughs> in Type Racer, it's gonna really We're gonna have Faker, all the bots and stuff, and like all the drills are gonna be named after like Faker. Bengi is gonna be like the smite stealing drill, and the kids aren't gonna even know why. Standard line of scrimmage by both sides of Dolphin, Flash, and not, uh, Life of Polio. If you've just joined us and did not watch the first game, I despise you so much. <laughs> Life of Polio leading. Ooh, we're gonna see a little bit of scrap. Life of Polly right now is leading 1-0 after a dominant first game. And if you've not heard our beautiful voices before, my name is Prince of Nepal. I'm and Nicole I'm Caster. Manier, and we got Manier Sunny doing play-by-play. -play. And we're built bringing you Prophecy Cup Nitrogen League Week 7. Conference re! Oh, my bad. But no, so uh, bottom lane, real, while we were doing our introduction, I tried to cut him off for it because I'm BM. Yasuo and Poopapi tried to do a little cheese in the tri bush. They didn't work out for them too well because I feel like that's something when you don't see them in lane, you're like, huh, Clay came to lane late too. So once somebody here is bullshitting, I wonder who it is. And they just were, they walked in fake step, just debated out, saw them, and they just got to lane a little late. Cassiopeia in the mid lane. Thing we did see in the... Oh, we're gonna see a gank up top. Level 2 gank coming in right here. Gonna force the flash out of Kled really quick and get him dismounted. And make this early laning all the more rough. So Kled, while well, I mentioned he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Urgot, he can... Kled himself cannot. Kled and Skarl, they can do it. Uh, while talking about that level 1 situation that we had in the bot lane, while it didn't end up getting any sort of summoners or any sort of Meaningful damage. Oh my god. Kled? Flip him back. Kled uh, trying to get the he rebound. He does oh! It. oh my gosh. That is that tragic. That would have been way too close. That would have been. That definitely was not a play that he thought out. He was like, I guess I'm going for it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very, very close. First blood to the side of Dolphin Slash. And that is definitely what they need as a 
bit of a morale boost after that crushing first game. Oh goodness, okay. Snowballing this kid up, gonna get it real icy just like my wrist. Nunu gonna go in for the knockup. Cassiope coming from behind now to put some damage. Gonna miss out on the Miasma, will land the Noxic first. Oh! The uh, roll from the bottom lane, Janna coming up, flash over the wall, one more it's twin things, and just keep running it down. She has glue, but not enough mana getting back. To oh my god, what a roll. coming in. Gonna dash through the chickens, the crimson razor beats. Oh! One more auto attack, misses the kill with the sidestep, but gets the auto attack. And now here comes coming back, Alistar's gonna butt that booty away to the side. Will he pay for the sacrifice right here? Janet gets to knock up. One more Noxious Blast might be able to get it. Top lane is where Auto Camera's gonna take me to this duel. Clegg gonna get dismounted and get the scrap it Ezreal. up. Here in the bottom lane, Ezreal now made his way up. Yaslo just going for blood at this point, trying to get the set kill with him. Won't be able to get it. Cassiope gets the double kill. And this map is popping off real hard in this early game. Five kills before five minutes. Cassio is sitting at 3 and 0 with 600 gold bounty. Let's rewind and take it back to that. Knight of Zed going in for the Innovade didn't actually have wards on Mr. Tico, so he went very aggressive. Cassio was able to roam first, and the brawl began. The big thing to call out there was Mango went very, very, very aggressive in that. Ezreal didn't roam too early, but he was able to get into the fight, and that really changed the tide of battle there, because they clean up three kills. Three kills to one there. And that is huge for the side of Dolphin Slash, because that, again, we talked about that. That first game was very crushing and could have been a mental boom kind of game, but they're able to come back, and that is a very, very strong lead for X-Pride. The game is now squarely on his shoulders to carry it through. Sitting at just about a 1.5k gold lead, again for Dolphin Slash after that fantastic brawl that happened at four, just four minutes into the game. And obviously we saw blood in the first game, but most of it was just Dolphin Slashes. I think we're going to see a lot more of a competitive game here. We're going to see a lot more competitive game. It's not, even though this team's got an early advantage, this isn't a a ridiculous early advantage so far. We're gonna have to see how it fruit comes to fruition throughout the later stages of the game. This team, I like it because not all the lanes are losing. <laughs> They're not all lose lanes with lack of priority, the terminology that Prince Nepal used. You're telling me if not if every lane isn't shoved to tower, <laughs> isn't just getting their butt shoved into tower, that it's actually a good thing. What? <laughs> um I don't know man. I'm just a silver what am I, Silver 2 now? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember this, this whole new mixed rank system. Doesn't really mean anything. Coming up here for the gank top, Kindred and Urgot gonna trade tank as best they can, not quite off his little Scarl thing. You get ground up to bits. And that right there, Mar Marquiso C East, however you say that guy's name, gets the kill on the Macho 804. I looked at his name like the first game in, like the first minute, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna call him his champion there. <laughs> you know, some ga some people have easy names like Viper and uh, Chovy and uh, Mikey, and some people have uh, Marquise. Marquise. Hey, Lamal. Um, Will Wimp and Nunu doing their thing still. Might have a display issue, according to some of our viewers. Snowball getting sent off to the side right quick. Nunu gonna realize, I don't want a piece of that. And, or Nunu and Willem gonna realize they don't want a piece of that. And walk away very quickly. They back out here, but the solo laners for Dolphin Slash are having a very good game. Both of them sitting on at a bounty. And this Goldie is pretty much being charged to them. Aggressive play from Mango and Poppy, but just not able to get it. Ezreal and Janna just able to play safe enough to where spot lane's kind of becoming a non-factor. They'll take the falling behind early if they know they're up these oh, are ahead. Oh, there's a game. Here it comes. Clay oh. coming in. Three man. He's gonna get the charge. Very quick shutdown. Very good League of Legends right there. And now that's Oriana. Sh the shutdown from Cassiope is even getting handed over to I believe that was Noon or Will Nunu and Willem. So that yes. gives them a nice chunk chunk of change. And that more importantly, 
that kind of hurts Cassiopeia, right? Because Cassiopeia, while she's ahead in kills, if you notice, she's down almost 20 farm. And this is going to let her fall further behind. Urgot's going to look for something right here because Fear Beyond Death is on his way. But this is really just a temporary hold. He should go back top and try and keep Scarl, keep his lane in check. Honestly, I'm very surprised that Pride, even he had blue, he had the 3 0 lead. Uh, Soma was still behind 20 CS on Geradius, and you can see just the laning prowess that Geradius has. Uh, one of the cool interactions that we did see there was due to the Kled's charge, that Nunu snowball was like slowly, slowly rolling into Pride, and then we just see the speed up, and it just went into full NOS as it just ran into Pride there. Wasn't able to get the kill onto someone. Or, ooh! Just a too slow there. Nunu going in right there. Trying to absolute zero. Not able to get it. Oriana also burning out the command shockwave. So something erupts right here around maybe both these teams going to get Baron. Or not Baron. Ocean Dragon in the next little bit. Might see something right there. Or that really opens up a gank opportunity for Kindred. That's going to open up a little window where Oriana doesn't have that ability to alt defensively under a tower. And they can look to try and make a dive with the Kindred death mark. One thing we haven't touched on, obviously... Fight. Due to how uh, how many brawls that have just been going around on the top and mid side, Mango and Poppy have been playing this ball lane where they should be getting poked out. Obviously, it's a very aggro ham lane, but just the range advantage should be winning it through. But they actually have the plate one of the platings down already. I see another brawl up here at top. Shouldn't be too much, but hey. Might want to take it all the way. Kled saying he wants to commit to this. Getting into the fight with Urgot. He's going to stick the harpoon into. Kled gets the humongous chunk and the remount before Urgot can find the kill. Now they should almost certainly finish this out. Wolf and Lamb getting that kill right there. Janna, the roam up top, is going to help get that. But with them seeing two people that should not be top top, that's going to result in them making the real quick play. And we're going to see the side of Life of Polio pick up this Baron. Or not this Baron. Again, this dragon. Why do I want Baron to have this one? Hey, Baron's fun. Baron is fun. Ocean Dragon's fun too for this... For the blue team. Oriana very much likes Ocean Dragon. Ocean Dragon early definitely will assist... Uh, the solo laners... For the life of Polio. Getting them... A uh, little bit... A little bit easier to lane. Do you want to say... Mango's having a... Pretty ridiculous CS lead on oh, my gear. Yeah. I was going to mention the fact, it's also the fact you're taking the Ocean Dragon away from a team where all five of them would want that Ocean Dragon. Like, yeah. The fact that you're taking it from them, because your team may not use as much, like Yaswell, you know, doesn't have mana, Clyde doesn't have mana. But if you would let Ezreal and Cassiope get that, that would not have been fun. No, a lot of tier stacking champions on the side of Dolphin Slash. And he just charges out. It's going to go ult away. Yep. Not too much action happening right now. We're in kind of a lull point. Dolphin Slash is in between sitting at tier and their first true items while uh, they're just playing passive and not letting the life of Polio make, make too many big plays on them. Things to do know is that uh, even though that the uh, mid and bot lane are behind score wise and everything, and in terms of matchup wise, they are getting plates, and plates do pay very, play a really big part in the game, especially early on. Ooh. Ooh. Radius might wait. be dead. Gonna get flashed and get hit over. Ooh. Gonna get pulled in by the wall ulti, but a real nice tornado <laughs> shield is that. not gonna keep the person that needs to stay alive alive. Round to bits up in the top lane. Nunu with a huge absolute zero. It's gonna push her to the limits inside the lamb's respite. And now that's gone, we're gonna see the pain coming down. Yasuo doesn't even have to finish the dunk because Nunu and Willem get the triple kill. And that's a real nice response from Polio. They're gonna be looking to get this mid tower and a lot of the plating. 53 getting split amongst the three of them. Ezreal up here, but Yasuo is just gonna put up that wall and reject his shot like he's the Marcus Cousins right there. Up on the top side, Mark. Urgot's trying to make a difference up there, <laughs> which lighting, but he can't really get much more ground, and they're going to knock almost all five rows of armor plating off here. They get a lot of armor plating. Okay. 
Marquez Austin. We have perfected it now. We will learn it now. I had to put it through Google Translate, aka my producer, and help me figure that out. So... One thing I do want to note in that fight, really big fight for the life of Polio. Gets him a lot of power plating, gets a huge now bounty on the side of Nut Zed. Nut Zed's a nutty player there. <laughs> He's able to save Geradius in the play, and you didn't even see it because it's such like a small play. He just dodged Cassio ulti, like melee range. Like Cassio threw out the ulti and he just kind of like looked back and then turned around, able to make the play, able to slow down both Mikey, both uh, the Janna there, and he makes the plays happen. He is the initiator and he's the person that makes a lot of these good plays for Life of Folio. Look back at it, look back at it. That was real good. Good reference. No problem. <laughs> Perfect timing, right? Real family appropriate. Yeah, so we're gonna look for something down to the bottom lane, but really he's just looking to get T to push his dominance over this Ezreal. We mentioned this lane for the side of Dolphin Slash is very safe, but it's to the point where they can't really make a difference. Kled gonna charge out and run away exactly how I did when kids tried to bully me in middle school. And now here we go, they're dirty farming the wave bottom lane. Um, and the Zed to try and make a difference top. Gonna charge up the absolute zero and destroy Kindred. Absolutely obliterated. Oh. Now getting the kill, we might get one. Don't know if we'll be able to get the second kill because Oriana's made her way. Cassiopeia is not making any sort of reaction. Come down and help. Help out your top laner, man. The tower's not worth it. As Oriana gets the kill credit onto Marquis Oista. And here we go on the top bottom lane now looking for the play. Gianna's like, you guys want to fight? Monsoon. And neutralize that. And boom, knock up. Here we go. Knight of the Zed coming in real good also. He gets both of them right here. Pretty much just completely disables that play right there because Oriana gets frozen in place, and that was honestly like the per like a frame perfect ulti for him. I don't agree with. Do you agree with just dying for that tower? Because I'm pretty sure the call from Mr. Tico and uh, the Urgot was just to die for the tower because Mr. Tico just kept autoing the tower while he was getting blasted by the Kled and Nunu there, and they tunneled really hard for the tower. But I don't know if that's worth it. They're just giving a lot of gold to the solo learners, and uh, you did call out the cast for not roaming there, but in that situation, it, with Geradius having priority and able to push the lane in, mm -hmm. at that point, it's not even worth it for Pride to really come into the head over to top. Fair enough, I suppose. Oh! Uh, okay, we're gonna have a fight starting down here. Lance is fight gonna get dropped in the pit, keep a lot of people healthy, but man, to keep Mr. Tickle alive. Ulti gonna be used to pull Oriana back in, and that's gonna be Kled going down. He's not Kled, Kendrick going down, and then Cassiopeia quick to follow. Urgot made his way to the party, and he's now getting in a fight with the Kled, who he's fought on the top lane, but now he's fighting in the river with all his friends. They're gonna bring the party, and they're gonna bring the pay, taking him down. And now here's Mikey doing his best to kite. He's got a Janna, but he's got a dream as well, and that's him wanting to stay alive right here. Uh, gonna dodge out the way of this snowball, but she's oh gonna see the price. God. He drifted so hard right there. Hear that kill and get the ace. Missing things indeed right there, because that was a really clutch need for speed. Toki, or not that need for speed, Fast and the Furious Tokyo drift right there. I like that. And it just seems like the life of Polya just knows what to do on the map. Uh, one thing I didn't even note was that Geradius was sitting on a, uh, he was sitting on a, uh, the sorcery elixir, like, after his last back. And I was questioning, I was like, why would he do that? But the thought process was that in a minute and a half, the Infernal Dragon was coming up. And so it just gave him that immediate power for that Infernal fight. Uh, Mr. Tinker just gets there late and is not able to get the smite off, and he ends up just dying way too early. And the fight just goes so in favor of the life of Polio. Now we're looking back to, to what we mentioned earlier. We're like, hey, this game is looking pretty good for Dolphin Slash, but like you mentioned, just Polio playing this really good as a team in terms of the map finds themselves up about three and a half thousand gold. Oh They're my! React God. very good with that flash. The whole look at that. Look at how many red people are up there. Like Oriana can retreat a hundred percent safely and not have to worry. She's going to try and bait them right here to come up to the team who's taking Shelly the Rift Barrel. But they, they got to realize something's up, right? You don't see anybody else on the map 
minus this Oriana who's walking in and out of this bush, who's trying to bait you. And now you see the rest of the team. <laughs> Clan inspiring his team with the charge and takes it on to X Pride, going into him real hard with that. Mucho picking up the kill with Handy Dandily. And now they're going to set their sights on this mid lane tower. Should be summoning up Shelly pretty soon to try and get this. Yep. They not? Okay, there it is. Shelly being summoned. And you can just tell that these guys have played League of Legends with each other. What? <laughs> I, I, Shelly's, Shelly's bugging out. Shelly is also... Uh, what is happening? <laughs> oh my! A three mid Orianna ult is happening with a real nice setup. Yasuo, instant double kill with Alistar getting his little piece of that. They're gonna get on this tower and Yasuo's gonna slash back the some minions, get onto the cannon. They're gonna push in and they're not stopping for anything. Ezreal and Cassiopeia can't really stop them. Nunu's gonna send a little mid-size semi-snowball. Minions should be able to take top tower for the side of the life of Polio. They're gonna make this rotation with Oriana just being the person kind of the sit here and try and command attack on Ezreal, weaken him. But while they do that, they should be able to pick up this tower. The minions are gonna die. They're not gonna care. They will tank this with their bases as Alistar. Hex flashes to strike fear in Ezreal's heart. And that's fourth tower here. 20 minutes in the game. We're starting to see this game slip away very quickly from the side of Dolphin Slash. And they're going to have to start to put some gripping gloves on it to get a hold of this. And again, it's just these players. Just They're just so comfortable with each other. They set up plays so much earlier than uh, Dolphin Slash does. And all of these plays look like they're just thought of. Oh, you know, we'll this is rough. Charging a fight. Yeah, wait, what the? Walking in the absolute zero. Going to get ground to pieces right there by Urgot. That was... They, he, they definitely overstayed there. The, the three men overstayed. Both Yasuo were, was top and Oreo was in base at the moment. Just just a little bit of oopsies when it comes to uh, where you're at, where the actual damage dealers on the team are and where uh, you are. Uh, I'm a little too strong. Something I do want to say again, it's all of these plays from Polio, the life of Polio, it just seems like they're always set up and they're forethought. There's nothing that just happens because someone's out there. Everything's like thought of and laid out. And we're gonna see a four-man play being happened, but... Mm, mm, here we go. Flipped away. Uh, right, quickly. Clyde Alti coming in. Oriana's gonna delete Cassiope and be like, now nah, let's go fight the 4v5. She's coming in from behind. While the team's fighting on Lambs, fight. Mr. Tico's gonna go down. Oriana's got the cutoff on the Urgot. Yasuo's got the double kill. He's probably gonna get the triple kill right here. As all five members, they're gonna be able to close in right here and they turn their backs. And what do you know? Baron's right behind them. Chinese Lunar New Year Baron gonna get taken down pretty quickly here at 21 and a half minutes. It's not that post 24 minute Baron that we've seen in the patch notes, but it's gonna be a really nice prize to boost this team to a commanding 10k gold lead as soon as they finish it off. And I disregarded this after the the early skirmish where Cassia was able to pick up three kills because I thought that she would be able to transition that lead as the game prolonged. But the players on the side of the life of Polio, they just, they just seem to be not to be rude or anything, just they just seem to have a better grasp of what's going. Like they just seem mechanically better, even in situations where we saw Cassio having blue buff and the three kills. Geradius was still up on CS in the ranged versus double melee lane, where even though it is aggressive, the Ezreal Janus should still have uh, poke advantage. Should be trying to shove up the Mango and Poppy and abuse them before the level six point. That didn't happen. Mikey and uh, the Janna were just sitting at tower, actually losing a plate even in that situation. And I can harp on the teamwork of the life of Polio, but individually, they're also very, very good League of Legends players. They play League of Legends much better than you and I, and it really shows because they're able to take a early game deficit and turn it into a 22 minute blowout at this point. Then he had almost a 10k gold lead. This is like a pretty... I think they're about to make the Nunu and Kled play again. It looks like they're setting up for it, if you can see on the map. They're Everybody sitting a little bit back. back. Yeah. And the second point I did want to make was... For the side of Dolphin Slash, uh, things that they can improve on... Uh, I want to see... I want them to do something more with their bot lane. 
It feels like their bot lane's always like like one of those hang on lanes. Like, hey, just play Ezreal Jedi and hang on, and we'll do something else on the map. But with the it's new changes, yeah, with the new changes, there's no more hanging on. If you're banning Draven Lucian and then you don't give them a uh -oh. pick, oh, here's the play starting up in the mid lane. Land despite having what? huge battles are coming in, headbutting out. Out or Urga in the middle of the team, and they're just bringing the pain. They decide they want to end the game right here, right now. APO Mango domination as he goes under the tower. That is that just tanked up the entire back line of Dolphin Slash while that play happened. And he's still taking tower and not even half health. Bites into a medium, gets the real nice heal. Gonna get onto this. Oriana chasing kids down. Command attacking people left and right to put fear in their heart. She has a fully stack of Magi's, has over 450 ability power this early into the game. They're getting minions from every lane. They're doing their best on the side of Dolphin Slash. Oh. To hold back the impending demise, but just look at the chunkage right there. On to the bottom lane tower, inner tower, Nexus, whatever tower it is. On to the inhib. That's two inhibs down. All five members of Dolphin Slash are back up. And it doesn't even seem like they're overstaying the stake of their all Philly. He's gonna get the knock up right here as he dashes so far in the back line. Oh, but he's got his battle buddy Alistar oh, here. A nice little stun. They might have spoken too soon. Caster Curse. She hits the three man ulti and gets the humongous chunks on the people. So far, this fight is a one, two for one. We're seeing that both the bottom main members down. Another person's gonna go down because Oriana's busted. And it's three for three, or three on three right now. Kled is dismounted, so Cassiope might be able to chase him down. Twin Fang's gonna drop the Ignite, pick up that kill, and we're gonna have to see the rest of the members of the Life of Polio go back to Fountain. And the Life of Polio, uh, not even doing a macro oopsies, just doing a... Let's let's try to dive their Fountain oopsies there. Uh, not gonna mean too much into the this, this state of the game because of how uh, wide of margin between the goal difference, the kill difference, the tower difference, and just the item break points that uh, Life of Folio's hit. But in cluster games, obviously, you wouldn't want to see your, the leading team make plays like that. Uh, one thing I did want to continue on my point was that, uh, yeah, hold on bot lanes at this point, I don't think work out too well in this meta. There's just too much damage that the AD carries do, and there's too much, they, they're, they're back to being carries. like. There are games where you just lose and you just pay safe, but there are games where you have to carry. And making your ball- oh my god. Uh, okay, here we go, the dunk happening, the knockup, Alistar, gonna set up for that kill, really quickly gonna go <laughs> the down. The orbital laser from Knight of the Zen shooting down the redemption to kill off this particular <laughs> really highlights how this, uh, this game is going. <laughs> Oh, um, we're gonna see what they do right here. As they just take a tower. Cassiopeia mid lane, Clay the gonna snowball. charge past. Here they go, Snowball dissipates off. Here they come. Down How dare you steal that. Jill Lamar Quest gonna get that kill really quick, or gonna go down really quickly. Mikey, <laughs> Mikey trying to run right there. I got an uncle named Mikey who used to be a track athlete, but he can run a lot better than that guy did. Here we go, going onto the fountain, flipping oh. them back. One last absolute zero means it's going to oh. be absolutely the end of this game. You may go down, Knight of the Zed, but the next is going to go down as well for the other team. Couple more auto attacks. Kled's going to stay on it and not turbo in like the rest of this team is trying to do. Doradius gets himself another kill, padding those props and tough stats. Finishes off the game 9 0 and 15. And at 27 and a half minutes, that's going to be our final time. Oh, on the nose. 27 and a half minutes. We're going to see Polio finishing this series out 2 to 0. Great play by them. Um, they just obviously fountain dives. I'm not going to judge them on that. Everyone does it. <laughs> it made the scoreline a little bit, uh, a little bit closer than it seemed. They just played two very clean games. They just seem like they know what they're doing in terms of macro. Like macro. They set up plays earlier than the uh, Dolphin Slash did. Their laners also seem to just be mechanically better. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I only have a two-game sample size, but <laughs> from the two games that I saw, they looked, They were out farming them. Even with the kill lead that Pride had in the early game, he was able... Geradius was still 20 CS up on him. Mango and Poppy in that lane... 
pushing them into tower. And just want to finish on to this hold on bot lane point. Their bot lane is holding on, right? So you have Ezreal Janna doesn't have a lot of, uh, they don't have a lot of like initiative in this lane. Uh, Pride got the level, like the three kills. So he's able, he can be the focal point for this game, but who pulls the trigger? Who initiates these fights for the side of Dolphin Slash? Uh, yeah. Emmanuel? Uh, I'm down to... Yeah, let's, we're, so we're going to conduct an interview on to none other than Knight of the Dead himself. The new, new, the new, new kindred uh, world-renowned jungler who world showed us world. both sides. He showed us... He showed Seriously, though, he, showed, he played a really good game the first game, got ahead... Just absolutely dominated all four quadrants of the jungle after getting that early game on kill on the least sin. And then the second game, they pick away the Kinder, and he's like, you know what? You can have that. I'm going to play Nunu this game. And he showed us why that Nunu of his is very good. Nunu was already his, Nunu was already pretty good before, but with this new patch of ADs making their comeback, Nunu is going to slowly get back into this game. Hello, hands on hip child. Hello? It's Dewey. It's Dewey what's up, boys? Child. Hey, what's How's up? How's it going, my dude? So, um, congrats on the 2 0 very quick game. I want Thank to talk you. to you on uh, is Nunu a champion that you normally play, or is he somebody because of, uh, we talk, I talked about it earlier, but just because ADs are coming back? So support junglers are coming. Uh, go look at my match history. You'll you'll see how much I play Nunu. I'm actually surprised I left it up for the second game. Mm -hmm. It's like my most played and ranked by like 20 plus games probably, and I have like a I have like a 65 percent win rate and like a 6 KDA on it. Okay, that <laughs> big tip. <laughs> Nunu might be a priority. Yeah, yeah, normally like every every game on Venus so far has been like a ban, but like they were just like, yeah, fuck it, we'll just drop it. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, average stat of Diamond, Jungle, and nu Jungle, Nunu, and Willem players, 3.59. Knight of the Zed, 4.98. Kill participation for that Diamond ones, 58.3. Knight of the Zed, 69.3. Has a very good Nunu. Uh, Damn, I didn't, I didn't even know that shit. I feel better about it now. <laughs> uh, looking at the... So the first game, we just saw complete smashing. After the first blood that you got on... Uh, the uh, Mr. Tico's Lee Sin. You guys never looked back there. Uh, how do you guys go from like a game like that and then transitioning to the second game, you guys lose the early skirmish or down three kills? Like, how does your mind transition? Because I know in a lot of games, like you will be popping off in one game. And as you go into the next game, you just think you're as strong as you used to. Yeah, and yeah. you can make mistakes as that with that mindset. How do you transition? Well, well uh, the mindset I always have is like in the early game. I mean, of course, early kills are important, but like they really don't mean anything. Like if we think we're the better team, I know we gave a triple kill to Cassiopeia, which that really does suck. <laughs> but Jared like kept like a twenty to three. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm in later. I was. I'm almost Jared. It's like a twenty to thirty CS lead on or two. Like so, I mean, he's just a better player. Top got camped. Whatever he's playing, Cled. Bot lane, they have Ezreal Drona. They can't do anything. So it's just like we have whatever we want to do to make plays with. So early game, we get over a few kills, whatever. But as long as we can make a few plays, like one good play, like one good skirmish, and we get three kills, and it's even. So if you just keep that mindset, where it's like, all right, it's just early game. Literally anything can happen. One good fight, and we're winning. It even uh, it makes it a lot easier. Some players just tilt too easy. I think all of us actually just, we just don't tilt. And we were all just like, yeah, it's fine, whatever, shit happens. We've come back from worse. And because of that, I think it makes it easy to actually come back. In terms of setting up, another question I had was that you guys would set up plays like way before. And I, I thought like one of the biggest brain things was when uh, your mid laner, Geradius, had a sorcery elixir. He bought that like 10 minutes, like 12 minutes into the game, like a minute and a half before the Infernal Dragon came up. And I was like, I was thinking, I was like, why is he buying this so early? And then my brain exploded. I was like, he's setting up for the play on Infernal. How do you guys plan out plays like so far ahead? Because you guys were pretty much setting up what you guys were going to do like two minutes ahead. And it felt like they weren't at a level of macro where they could really counter that at all. Uh, well, with our cop also, Drakes are just like super easy to get. Mid, Ori I think is good into Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia just got nerfed too. She's not as strong as a champ. 
So that's mid prior right there. But they have Ezreal Jana. They literally can't get priority. So Drakes are literally just Irish. So like just from the comp, we're already like, say, like prepping pretty much. All right, we want to get the early Drakes like whenever we can. So uh, it's you obviously want to plan a few minutes before too. But a lot of the, like for the Drake, for example, it was a lot just from our comp because we just knew we could take Drakes whenever we wanted pretty much. Are you guys, uh, I don't know, I haven't been keeping up with the league, I'm sorry for that. How, uh, what, what, how rank, like, what's your rank at the moment in terms of your, uh, the nitrogen uh, cup? first right now. Oh, okay. Uh, I can tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys played a very, like, incredibly clean game on there. I got nothing else to say. You, uh, that, the one play that I did see from you, which I, I thought was really, really, like, ridiculous, was the play you guys made mid lane, I think it was after the Drake. And you were snowballing in, uh, it was against the Cassio and a bunch of them, and it was when you guys took the mid lane uh, outer tower. Yeah. You just, like, dodged Cassio ulti. Like, yeah. you, didn't even, you didn't even look at it. You just, like, were like, let me dodge it. And then you turned around and turned back. And I know nobody noticed it, but I thought that was, like, really nutty. For Dude, me. I'm so <laughs> glad you noticed that, because right after the game ended, I was just like, do y'all see me dodge that Cassio, like, mid game? Yeah, and no like, one was like, no, what you talking about? I was like, shit. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't, I didn't think anyone acknowledged it. I was like, what am I watching? He just like took the Cassie ulti, got the initiate off, and then gets you got the Nunu ulti off as well, just to stop anybody from even doing anything on your team. Dude, like, dude, thank you for man. noticing that, man. I was yeah. just like, I was like, I was like hoping someone saw that, but no one pointed it out. I was mad about that. I was like, I oh, whatever. No problem. I gotta acknowledge big plays. <laughs> hey, just because you're playing Nunu doesn't mean you can't be flat. Exactly, dude. You can make big plays with Nunu too. Last thing for Nunu, I am also I play AD, but I like to play Nunu. I I think drifting is fun as hell. It's so fun. Do you th what What do you think about Predator Nunu? All right, so my big problem with Predator Nunu is just the fact that you don't have aftershock because I think that's a lot of what makes Nunu tanky. Uh, if you don't, if like if you can't proc an aftershock in a fight, you like die like actually really fast, especially with the build I'm doing where I go redemption. But Predator Nunu is actually so fun. Like, it's just like your snowball is like, it gets fat, like it's huge so fast, like you just like skirt, you know? It's it's so fun. I don't think it's bad. I definitely think it's still good. It's definitely still viable. I just think Aftershock's better. I, I, I agree with you. In terms of consistency, Aftershock's always better, but there's there's something about ganking somebody with the, like, like using your flash or something, getting the kill off, and then predatoring them down right after they spawn again, and you're just like... There's no way you're dodging. This yeah, game. it's like I actually so hard to avoid the gank. Like yeah. you just can't do it. You can flash right from the snowball, but then you just like sort of drift it back into him or something. You know, it's like so hard to deal with. And if you miss the snowball, you just chase him with your E. So like, uh, if you have predator, it makes it's like almost like a guaranteed kill on a gank. I agree. I agree. Well, thank you, Nada Z. I have no more questions. Emmanuel, anything? Nope, nothing for me. You played very. Two very clean games. You're my MVP. I'll give Oof, that. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm I'll be a lot of warrior. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're, <laughs> the Orion. <laughs> I'm giving it to you. Uh, I got nothing else. Hope you have a great day. Thank you. Hope you have a great day also. Yeah, thanks. And for everybody watching, uh, like appreciate all our viewers, all uh, 12 of you that are left that stuck around for this part. I'm now going to pull out my 100 dire riot gift. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, we're going to thank everybody that tuned in seriously. Thanks to our host, Piccolote, Luigi, and everyone that did their best to make this broadcast as great as it is. It's been the Prophecy Cup. So glad to have my good, my OG casting partner, Prince Nepal, back here by my side. To everyone that's listening, I will be casting more games. I am going to dedicate myself to casting as many games as you guys want i hope you enjoyed it uh I, I had a lot of fun both of the teams they played great enjoyable matchups no siestas only fiestas <laughs> i'm happy so signing off from prophecy cup and everlife gaming network this is emmanuel Manny sunny safe bloom this is prince of nepal Legends never die when the world is coming.